Hey booktube, authortube, how's it going? Um, today I'm going to do the Better Late Than Never um, NaNoWriMo tag um, that, let me see if I could figure this out right, <clears throat> um, Christina Horner I guess started um, and then Ben Sanders did it and um, who was talking, was it Rachel? Was talking about it in our Nano Voxer chat. Um, and um, pretty much everyone has done it um, but me. I don't know if anyone's done it the last couple days because I haven't been um, around. Uh, we had uh, some family over the last couple days. And, um, it's been kind of, I don't want to say chaotic, but it's a holiday weekend, and, um, there was a lot of driving involved, so I'm just like, whatever. Um, so I didn't, I was behind on my writing. Actually, these questions might show up in here, so let me just do the questions. How many times have you done nano? Well... I'm sure Nano would have a different answer. Um, I want to say I've been doing it every year since I heard about it, which was probably back in like 2013, but I've never finished it. I always start it, except for last year. Last year, I think, was the year that me and um, Brit the Change and a couple other people were like, nano, no, no. And we weren't going to do it, and we were all mad about it. Um, but then we did Camp NaNoWriMo, like right after we decided we weren't going to do that, like in the spring. So it doesn't really matter. But, um, yeah, so I've done it every year probably since 2013 or attempted it and just never finished it. And maybe these questions will, ex like, how did you first find out about NaNoWriMo? I honestly think I heard about it on a um, writing podcast. Um, back in 2012 and 2013, when I was getting out of uh, film and moving into books, um, I was listening to a ton of writing podcasts and self-publishing podcasts. Like, if there was any podcast out there with any kind of, like, writing advice or... Um, like publishing advice, I was on it. It was honestly, it was probably rock and self publishing Simon Whistler's old podcast because he always had guests on. Um, so I'm sure that was probably the first place I heard about it. Um, let's see here. Sorry. I'm like all about B. Um, what was the name of the first novel you attempted to write with Nano. Um, if it was 2013, it was probably 2014, actually. Um, so it was probably a sequel to one of the books that I was already planning on writing anyway during that time. So it was either a Shallow Jallow book, um, a Black Market Blood Drive book, or a Brain Thief book. Um, more likely than not, that's what it was. Pretty sure. It was probably... It was probably a Shallow Jallow book. Yeah, so it would have been called The Tainted Thorax of the Tarantula. 
Zoe made the cover for it and everything. <clears throat> so, there you go. Um, give us a one-sentence summary of what you're writing this year. Um, it is a um, sword and sorcery tale about um, slaves rising up against their masters, but it's really more of a story between a, a relationship story between a father and a son um, with the slavery and sword and sorcery being the backdrop for it. Um, what is the best writing advice you've ever been getting, given? Don't listen to writing advice. That is the best advice I've ever heard. Um, I've been talking in another writing group, um, that like, um, Zane and Britt and Shan and Aaron and Peter, um, we have, a another Voxer chat and, um, we were just talking about this the other day, but like, I feel like before I learned anything about writing, um, the first, like, I guess it was like, I'm not, and I'm not talking about like poetry books or anything like that, but the first books I wrote, um, two, three, four. So I wrote four books before I knew anything about writing. And there was, it was so much fun and it was so freeing and everything felt good about it when I was doing that. Um, then I started learning a lot about writing and ever since then, all I do is second guess myself. I second guess everything I do. Um, I'm constantly going, oh no, is this what I'm supposed to do here? Is this um, blah, blah, blah? And I get really freaked out. And um, you just, you can't go back <clears throat> to that innocence of not knowing anything. Like, once you've opened Pandora's box, you're fucked. You know, there's no going back. And even though a lot of the stuff I wrote then was probably not right, like it wasn't proper, um, I feel almost a stronger bond to those things because they were so out of left field and they were so me and it wasn't me trying to implement things. And I'm hoping that one day I'll be able to merge to where all of these things that I've learned about writing and all of this stuff is just become such second nature that all of the stuff that I loved about when I was writing before is still could still come through. Um, so I don't know, I guess we'll just see, but yeah, don't listen to anything anybody says. And again, if, and this makes me a hypocrite, but if anyone gives you advice and then makes it sound like that, that is the only way to go with something and that something else is completely wrong. Don't listen to it. Cause that's crap. All right. Did you ever take a year off from Nano? Why? Yes. Um, last year, I think it was. It was either last year or the year before, but I really think it was last year. Um, I don't know what happened, but me and all my writing group friends were... talking about it and the reasons why I don't like nano. Okay. And they're all pretty superficial, but I get a lot of emails from them like every day. And 
Um, that drives me crazy. I hate getting messages from them. It's like, I know it's NaNoWriMo. I know I'm supposed to be writing right now. Leave me the hell alone, and I'll do my writing. Then, it was either last year or the year before, um, when I was doing, I started NaNo, and their crappy website, I couldn't update my words. And I'm like, okay, well, this is stupid. They want me to put in the words I'm writing, but... When I do that, nothing's happening. <clears throat> and this year, the biggest problem was, like, adding buddies. Like, there were a bunch of people that every time I tried to look them up, it's like 404 page not found, or whatever. Um, and that was super annoying. Um, and I heard other people having that same problem, too. So, it's just like, I don't know why... NaNoWriMo, like, they raise money and stuff, you know, for some reason, they should just raise money to hire somebody who's not a dumbass to maintain their website, because every year their website has problems, and they have a lot of cool little, um, like, I like the minimal, minimalist art style that the site has, and that all of their um, branding has. I've always liked that. Um, but um, you can only push a man so far before he completes, completely loses his mind. Um, and then the other thing is, to get back to what the question actually was, which was, did you ever take a year off of NaNo? Why? Um, <clears throat> we were joking around, and we were saying NaNo, no, no. And that it puts too much pressure on you. And um, we were... I can't remember what the abbreviation was. But we were basically saying, like... We're just going to write a short story every day. And um, screw this, screw that, blah, blah, blah. And the funny thing is, like... Nano even has, like, the Nano Rebel badge you can get. Which is just like, do whatever the hell you want on Nano. And what a lot of us were talking about in my group was that um, we write all the time, you know? Like, we might not write every single day, but every week there's a project that we're working on. One of, I mean, all of us are working on something. And between Weird Mask and the serials I write for Weird Mask and the stuff I edit for Weird Mask and the stuff that I write and edit for my website and the books I'm writing, I'm always working on something. So um, I think Nano is mainly for people who've never written a book before who want to write a book. And it gives them a structure and it gives them something to go by. When the Nano website works... I really enjoy it. I like the stats it gives. Although, I don't know if all the stats are accurate. Um, I've done some different things, and it still says that I'm typing 13 words a minute. And I've changed my times. I've done all this stuff. I've And it's like, you've written 13. I'm like, I know I write more than 13 words a minute. Give me a freaking break. So, um, I don't know. Um, there's still some bugs in it, but man, if that site worked, I would use Nano all the time. It's a lot of fun. Um, I wish there was a type of, like, if you could change the Nano site, I would turn it into an app, um, more than a site. And this might just be iPhone talking, so I don't know how it would work um, anywhere else. But, like, just like Voxer or Discord or, um, what's that other one? Slack. Something like that. Because the thing about Nano that is the strongest thing pushing me to continue doing Nano 
is the community um, that, like, we on BookTube, AuthorTube, have built. Because, um, like, every day people are giving updates, and it's totally inspiring. Um, some people have been talking about things that they're struggling with in their writing. And whenever somebody talks about that, it always helps somebody else out. Like, um, a couple people have had weird little dilemmas <clears throat> and, um, it ended up helping me write what I was writing, hearing people talk about it. Um, so that, that's been really cool. Um, and then I don't know, like Steve wants to have like 36 like shark attacks in his book and I don't understand why, but it's just like, he's like, yeah, and then this guy comes in here and then a shark jumps up onto the deck. And I'm like, that's, you're getting a little crazy here. So, oh no, it's okay. Then there's going to be this big ballroom scene and then a shark comes through the porthole of the ship. And we're like, oh dude, come on. So, um, like we, a lot of us have been trying to just talk Steve down from Sharknado on the open waters for his book, but all that stuff helps, you know what I'm saying? It makes it really, um, good. Um, what is your biggest inspiration when figuring out what to write? Whatever is happening. Um, there's a lot of ideas that I've had for a very long time and I never wrote them right away and I regret that now because I'm a different person than I was when I came up with the idea and I feel like if I would have written certain things when the idea struck um as far as like inspiration goes it would have been a much better not much better but a much different story um and now that I'm kind of getting old enough to where I could look back on stuff that I did 20 years ago, almost now, um, it's interesting to think of how the things that I've already done would be different now if I were to do them again. Um, but like the story I'm working on now, I'm sure I, I'll save that for like a nano update because that's just going to get me going forever. But um, just anything. Anything from... Um, I used to do crazy, like, if I didn't know what to write, I would um, turn on the TV and just start going up the channels. And every commercial, and when I would find a commercial, I would, like, write a couple things from the commercial, change the channel write the next couple things, change the channel, write the next couple things. And I'd have this list of all of these things. And if you merged all those together, you would have some weird story about something or another. Um, but I do like to jump between genres a lot. So sometimes I like writing like hard boiled detective stuff. Sometimes like right now I'm wanting to write sword and sorcery stuff, but I'm also wanting to write Westerns right now, because I've been reading a lot of Westerns. Um, but then there's this other part of me that just wants to write like fictionalized versions of my life. Um, probably because there's a lot of looking back on stuff and all that right now. So I don't know. Um, but anything, the news is always good, like keeping up on what's going on and then adapting that into what you're working on. Um, but yeah, anything like coming up with ideas isn't hard. It's coming up with ideas that you could actually work with, I think is the, the biggest thing to try to figure out. Um, read us the first sentence from one of your novels. Well, I will read the first sentence of the one I'm working on because it's open here. Um, Zayed of the Snow brought his stone axe down with great force as he split the lawmaker's skull. So, that is the first sentence of, um, the book I'm working on now, which I believe right now is still called Slaves of the Pit. Um, 
Not 100% if I'm keeping that or not. Um, why do you love writing? Well, because digging up bodies from graveyards and trying to reanimate them is illegal. And this is the next best thing. Um, it's just... I like to create. Yep. Just like to make stuff. So, that's it. And writing is like the cheapest low budget way to do anything without a budget so like I could be dirt poor broke living in the trunk of my car and I could write a story about a guy with billions of dollars blowing up helicopters on the moon you know it doesn't cost nothing so um that makes it fun so anyway um I guess that's it um, I'm pretty sure everyone in my nano group has already done this tag. Um, I might be wrong on that. But, um, and then other than that, I don't know who's doing nano. So if you are doing nano and, um, you haven't done this tag yet, please do it and then let me know that you did it so I could come watch it. Um, but yeah, I hope everyone, everyone's nano was going well and that you're going well, going well doing well. Goodbye.